Buried is an interactive story. The plot will change based on the choices you make. The story is broken into five chapters. Play straight through or at your own pace. There's no waiting and no pause. Enjoy and choose wisely. What's up YouTube Vampire Gaming here? Today we're playing Buried. It's an interactive story, obviously. I actually watched Markiplier play this game. It's pretty cool. The choices are cool, so I figured I'd check it out. overhead look familiar. It's a clear night sky. Most beautiful. Except for the fact that this means I've been out cold for at least six hours. There's something wrong. I don't remember what, but something happened. My head. God. My head hurts. And a ringing in my ear. Was there an accident? An explosion? I think. I remember Dennis screaming. But after that, I can't remember. As I sit up I notice that my hard head has been thrown off. I look around the area, but it's not here. It feels strange to go anywhere without my hard head. I've got to find the other members of the crew. They could be in danger. Real talk, if something happened, they're probably already dead. Let's go find my head. I get up on shaky legs and look around for a moment. A few nearby trees seem to have been splintered and broken at the base recently. They certainly weren't like this earlier. Searching for the hard hat feels normal. Makes me feel like there isn't something wrong here. I see it behind a fallen log about 10 feet away from me. How is it that it was thrown so far? But that it was thrown so far is beyond me. Driven by nothing more than habit, I walk over to it, pick it up and place it on my head. Next I walk over to the center logging site and don't like what I see. Oh no, Johnny boy. The logging site looks like a bomb was detonated right in the center. Don't know where to start. The one load we had managed to stack on a truck for the day overturned. The trailer bent and the log is hanging off the back. Where the hell is everyone? My head is killing me and it's ringing in my ear. I can't hear anything, not birds, not my footsteps, nothing. It makes me wonder if I hit my head after my hard hat fell off, blew off. I ran through a quick mental checklist to make sure my brain is still working. My name is Roger Hastings. I'm 41 years old. The year is 2017. I own a small logging company. We've been logging in the strip of Kentucky Woodland for almost a month now. Okay, so my brain works. That's a relief. But it almost makes me fearful because something is certainly not right here. I look around the logging site, my mind trying to figure out what has happened. Just about every piece of equipment has been overturned or tilted. Look at the truck or the debris. Maybe someone was, offer was operating the truck. Look at the truck. Truck. The hitch is completely broken. Like it was blown off in an explosion or a really bad accident. Had there been an explosion, all the fuel on site would have started to fire. There's no charring, no burning, nothing. I walk through the slow area where Dennis had been working. From the looks of it, he'd been moving slowly. He'd only taken down four trees today. His metal lunchbox is open and indicated that he'd ta been taking a break early. An early break. He's not here. No one is here. Where the hell is everyone? I could try to make a call on my cell phone, but its battery is already running really low. Not that it matters, the reception is crap over here. Call someone on cell. Yell out. Who's your phone? Hey guys, where is everyone? Tony? Dennis? Frank? Joe? But their names fall flat among the wreckage. I get nothing back other than scaring away a few birds overhead. Might as well start walking and try to find some answers. The highway is almost a mile back through the woods, down the gravel road we used to reach the site. Maybe the crew ran that way for help, but why would they have left me? Were they scared? Out of sorts? Maybe I can catch up to them, but with my truck overturned on its side, it looks like I'll be walking. My god, I can't even remember what I was doing before waking up on my back. Wait, what's that underneath the bulldozer? My god, it's a leg! 
to be either Tony or Dennis. The dozer looks unstable like it might roll over some more. It might not be safe to get close, but at the same time, I can't just leave him there. Gotta go look. Tony, I hope you really make a good pizza. Hey, I yell, are you okay? You still alive? Holding on to my hat, I skip over the wrecked equipment. Stray logs to get closer. I can see a bit more of the leg. The jeans are soaked in blood. I recognize the work boots. It's clearly Tony. His leg is bent in an impossible angle and nearly crushed flat. The closer I get, the more apparent it becomes that Tony did not survive. Gone, bro. R.I.P. There's nothing I do for him now. I start to back away slowly. I shock, I stumble back, suddenly tripping over one of the stray logs. My head collides with one of the logs as I bite the ground. My hard hat does its job. Thank God I decided to look for it earlier. But what's more startling is realizing that Tony is dead. Looking at him, I feel something rising up in my throat. I don't know if it's a scream or vomit. I have to push it away. I lose my cool right now. There are too many questions that will go unanswered. Shit! I can't believe this. Tony, he had two boys. He coached his oldest son's baseball team. He was the hardest worker I had. He was one of the most honest and reliable men I knew. This isn't right. I can't stay here. I have to find Dennis, Frank, and Joe. I have to find out what happened here. seconds it sounds like it's coming from far away. I can't help but wonder, is it my ears or is it something else? The silence out here is creepy and there's a smell like the atmosphere after a bad summer storm. I feel, I might as well admit it, I'm a little scared. Everyone is missing and it's dead quiet out here. There doesn't even seem to be a breeze to rustle the leaves or green branches. My right knee hurts like hell. My head was hurting so bad before that I've never even noticed the pain in my knee. It, I must have heard it during the, well, in the what, accident? Or, wait, is that Dennis? I see him sitting on the ground, motionless, about 30 feet away. Yell out. Fuck oh off. If something crazy happened, I won't want anyone walking up on me, and he's about 30 feet, and I can recognize him, and you can probably recognize me. Yell out. You the lady who? Dennis! I yell. Dennis! Can you hear me? Dennis lets out a shout like someone walking, waking from a nightmare. Then he looks back at me from the ground. Yeah, Roger! I hear you! He hollers back as I head over to him. Dennis is built like a wrestler and has the tough personality to match. But in this moment, he looks disoriented and even a little anxious. Though I'm glad to see him. The fear on his usual confident face is alarming. What the hell happened? What's going on, he asks. Don't know. Crew is missing. Explosion, I think. Don't know. Missing, Dennis says. Where do you think they went? Not sure, I say. But it has me pretty freaked out. Something's not right here. Still standing on the ground, he looks around the woods as if he is just now understanding the severity of the situation. The equipment was overturned. The dozers too, I say, shifting my head, hard hat, and whipping, wiping my forehead. You okay? Yeah. Just shaking up. Me too. This might be the most intimate conversation Dennis and I ever had. While he and I have always been on good terms, we've never been particularly close. I've always respected him, though. Sure. He's come to work a few times, like he had been in a bar fight the night before. But I've also seen him do an enthusiastic impression of a dinosaur as he played with Tony's kids while they waited for their dad to finish up his shift. It's then that it hit me. Dennis and Tony were good friends. I am not sure I want to rattle him with the news of Tony's death right now. 
that before we know what's going on. Yes to no has a right to know. Dang, Tony. You made a mean pie. I think Dennis is going to be really upset about that. Don't mention Tony is dead. Tony is dead. We got to tell him. I'm an honest man. I don't believe in like lying. All right, the truth. Tony is dead. We're up front with Dennis about Tony. Dennis' eyes fixate on me, startled. He was crushed under the dozer, I say. Dennis pauses for a moment, like he's trying to understand what I said. His eyes narrow and his bottom lip quivers. Shit, he says. And I can tell he is frightening, fighting back tears. He and Tony had been tight, almost like brothers. Hey, he adds quiet quickly as if trying to escape the reality of Tony's death. You see that light? No, I say. Wait, what did you see? I don't even know, Roger, he says. It was like this flare of white light. It came right up out of the ground, like an explosion. So there was an explosion, I say. Maybe it was some equipment, or... This was no equipment. Dennis interrupts, agitated. This huge ball of light came right out of the damn ground. Where did it go? I don't care what it looks like. It just shot up into the sky until it was out of sight. When? I'm not sure, he answers. But I had finished about ten trees for the day. It was about the top one. That's when it happened. You're almost done with ten trees, I ask. <clears throat> yeah, he says. Looking at the ground, you know I wouldn't want to take a lunch break until I was done. <laughs> and that's when the light, that light blew up. Why? You don't believe me? I think you're exaggerating, bro. I'm pretty sure I saw about three trees cut down, but for the sake of everything, I believe. You believed in us. I saw what he saw, I think to myself. He has no reason to lie about this. My god, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, he says. But if I'm being honest, it scared me pretty bad. And if it's all the same to you, I'd like to get the hell out of here. We both stand up and start heading towards the road. It isn't until we start moving that I see Dennis is wounded. His right side is coated in blood and red seeping through his blue shirt. There were splatters of it here and there, but also a very large splotch that makes me worry. How'd you get that injury? You out of pain. I feel like he's not gonna remember how he got that injury. Let's inquire. I'm not sure, Dennis replies. I might have gotten thrown or hurt somehow from that light. It's then that I notice the strange ringing noise is still filling the air. Hey! I say, stop it. You hear that high-pitched ringing noise every once in a while? Dennis looks scared when I ask him the question. He just nods. Thought it was just me, he says. He looks out of the sorts and uncertain. I've never seen him like this before. It's obvious that he's looking for some reassurance. Even though I'm his boss, there's something very unnerving about this. Well, okay. We'll be okay. It's probably not. Probably that ball of light, dog. Probably nothing. Let's be realistic, I tell myself. I might as well try to be empathetic. Out here in the middle of these woods, the ring could be anything. Maybe a car alarm. Through the woods or something. Still, even my passive comment seems to have reassured Dennis. He looks a bit calmer, more relaxed. We both start moving forward. And don't say another word. Did you try to call Frank? Dennis asks. I know he had his cell on him today. Not yet. Luckily I still have some battery left. I pull on my cell and call Frank. Happy I didn't make that call to Dennis earlier. The rings but he doesn't pick up. But then I hear his phone go off behind the stack of logs. Dennis and I give each other a look. As the phone goes to voicemail, I hang up and walk behind the logs to find Frank's phone on the ground. Abandoned. We look around for Frank, but find nothing, not a single trace. It's then that I notice something really odd, a ten foot wide hole in the ground, right near where the phone was. There's no stray piles of dirt or rocks. It's clean, smoothly dug, cutting into the earth, wide, but only a few feet 
deep. It looks unnatural, like the ground was just deleted. No shovels or diggers used. Dennis walked over to it. This looks like the kind of hole where I saw that light come from the ground. He muses to himself. I say nothing. My mind is spinning, but I don't know what to think. We need to get out of here, Dennis mutters. At that moment, that ringing noise carries through the forest and sending a shiver down my spine. Dennis is right. There's something strange going on and we might not be safe here. But that ringing sound could be a clue to where the rest of the crew, crew went. Oh man, I really want to go check out that sound, but I really don't want to die. The rock. No, let's go check. not right, I say. There's a mechanical noise like that? You think someone is out here, yes? Maybe. I think we should at least check it out. They might be able to help. Yeah. You go right ahead, he says with me. I'll be waiting here for you. Better hurry, though. Ah, oh, fudge. Dennis doesn't look <laughs> he's in the best shape to try around the forest, but we need some answers. God, Dennis, you're gonna die. If I leave you, I'm gonna lose you, and I know it. Fudge. Dennis here. Okay, I'll go alone, I say. You stay here and try to hang on. I'll try and find someone. Anyone. Anyway, I give Dennis a final look. Since I got this could be a big mistake. He's looking at me like he's terrified of me now. Making a moan in his throat. I turn away and start moving through the woods quickly. With Dennis all alone, I need to find the crew and get help right away. Every tree out here looks exactly the same. In the county, country, we can find, uh, and I can find my way around the forest without much of a problem, but I'm starting to feel a little disoriented. Leaning against the tree when I see something that has no business being there. Our logging crew has been out here for three weeks and it seems impossible that we could have missed it. What is it? It's a small building, sort of a mixture of a shack and a bunker. It looks like it's made of concrete, moss and leaves, and plain old erosion, but also make it look sort of mystical. It looks like something out of a demented version of a medieval fantasy movie. Part of me wants to go back to Dennis. Seeing this early building in the middle of nowhere makes me yearn for company. It makes me feel like a little kid that is spooked out of that old abandoned house at the end of the street. Plus, that ringing noise that happens every once in a while, I think it's coming from this building. I'm racking my brain trying to remember if I've seen this before, but I haven't. I'm not sure of it. It's never been here until now. Is Frank in there or Joe? They can't be. But then again, they aren't anywhere out here. Being inside the building is certainly more appealing than walking through the woods for a mile with an aching knee. No. I find that I'm a little scared when I take my first few steps towards the building. The first thing I see is a sturdy metal closed shed. Knock. No balls. Feeling a strange, a bit strange. I rap on the door a few times. It creaks and echoes with some attacks. Doing no response, I turn the handle open. Surprise that I encounter no resistance. No, go back. Get Dennis. I want Dennis. The door opens easily. Even though I hear the click of a lock, looking closer, I see that it locks from the outside. Is someone trying to keep somebody from leaving? Reaching out in front of me, a small interior to match the outside. The building is torn into the concrete floor in dingy. Featureless walls. There are no windows. Giving this place an even more isolated feel. Still, I hear the ringing so it's coming from somewhere in here. It's louder now, more prominent. The interior seems confining at first, but a small set of concrete steps, about five feet down, reeling a long corridor. Go back for Dennis! Dennis! I don't know. It's a massive corridor. In fact, like, I'm in some kind of building underground that seems to go on forever. 
corridor is steep. This corridor is quite dark, lit by emergency lights, based about every 10 feet or so. I assume I'm now underground because the corridor extends far beyond the limits of the building I am. I realize that someone might not appreciate finding me here. quietly or walk quickly. I really want Dennis walk quietly. I'm eager to figure out what's going on here. My footsteps echo loudly in the dust on the dirt. If there is anyone here, <coughs> bless me. It's not likely that, it's not like I'm trying to be quiet and stealthy with the intention of sneaking up on them. If anyone is listening, they'll definitely know I'm here now. It's coming into view at the end of the hallway is another set of concrete steps leading further into the depths of the earth. I can still hear the ringing noise in every so often. And from somewhere in here, I look ahead to the concrete stairs, wondering just how far down they go. I approach the steps, and as I take my first steps down, I sense that I'm crossing some sort of line here. May very well be no going back. Go back and get Dennis. I want Dennis. Oh no. They head down the stairs. I notice that they look aged. That damned ringing noise is somewhere below. Louder than ever. I feel like I'm walking down into the cellar of a haunted house. Light becoming scarce as the stairs take a straight, a slight turn. I can feel the temperature drop. As I keep moving down the stairs, my mind seems to lock in on the unknown fate of the rest of my Mike is married and met his wife a few times. A nice woman with a huge laugh. My heart sags a bit when I realize I might never get to hear him. Belting out classic rock tunes during lunch break. Joe, I don't know too much about him. He's 22 and is considering community college. His folks are deadbeats, but he's been providing it for himself since the age of 16 or so. I hear the woods, regardless of the background or age, I'm responsible for them. When they're frequenting a local bar after a long day or all away from their families on this risky job, I'm responsible for them. Maybe I still, maybe I can still find them and still get to hear Frank singing in his deep baritone voice after a few too many drinks. I slowly stick my foot out in search of the next step. I can't help feeling like a child as a very powerful fear seizes me. I'm expecting a monster to reach out of the darkness, slicing into my throat. After what feels like forever, we come to the bottom of the stairs. I'm closer to the source of the ringing noise now. The door sits securely in the wall and looks just out of place down here. As I feel, a sliver of light seeps through, illuminating the area. Door has what it looks like a panel. Lots of labels and lights. Small, embossed print. Above the panel says Level 1 Entrance Gate, Transport Sector. There's a button with no label. Push the button! I gave the button a push. One of the readings on the panel flickers to life. Outage! That's all it says. Then it goes dark. The panel looks like a diagnostic alert system of some kind. Each label meant to communicate some status. Lockdown. Engaged. Experiment. In process. Shut down. Engaged. These all appear to be off, but one of the one of the phrases has a slowly blinking red light next to it. Only powered light on the whole thing. Abnormal entity breach. What the hell? I slowly push the door open, and more light pours in as I walk through. As I do, that ringing, or beeping, or whatever the hell it is, it's a, lot, a little louder. The door closes behind me with a click. At this moment, I can't help but think about Dennis back up on the surface. What is going on up there? Why did that bulldozer turn over? What was it that knocked us out? I hope I haven't left him in a dangerous situation. I've been preoccupied with my own fear that I nearly forgot about the ringing noise. It had become just background noise. I take a few more steps and can now see where I am. It may 
makes no sense. Yet, another thing that simply seems out of place. The shape and muted colors of metal are easy to identify, and it just don't, doesn't belong here. Alright, it's actually pretty cool so far. I'm really upset I left Dennis. I don't know if you'll get to join me later on. But um, Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to bite the like button if you like the video, and subscribe for future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching.